Hello everyone, welcome back to Accenture RC. Following the incident I talked about in my previous video, I did receive the replacement parts for the HEQ Swan K1 Pro and finally was able to get some proper range testing and endurance flights done. However, having learned my lesson after assembling the plane in a minute, I took another minute to tape all pieces together, front and back, just as a precaution. Also, for some reason, the left side really did slide in and out shockingly easy, unlike the right, which did take some effort to push in. Regardless of that, I taped both sides, it only takes some minutes, so it's not a big deal. I also made sure to tighten the props more than what I usually do, since some people reported they could actually unscrew in flight, especially during transitions from fixed wing to hover mode. First was the endurance test, since I wanted to have at least one test fully done just in case something happens again during the range test and the plane is unrecoverable. I actually installed the new set of props that HEQ sent me along with the replacement parts, took off, tested the controls to make sure all is working as it should be and then transitioned to fixed wing mode. Unsurprisingly, the new set of props were just as unbalanced as the other ones and resulted in the same type of jello in the camera. I have been wondering what would happen if I just stick some random ND filter in front of the Swan's camera. Perhaps it might improve things a bit, though I doubt it will clear them completely. For that, I will have to find a way to balance these heavy props, so I'm open to suggestions. Due to crash considerations, I did not strap my DJI Osmo action camera to the plane this time around, but I did hand over the remote to my girlfriend, told her what to do and in what direction to fly it, and took off with my Mavic Air 2 to get some chase footage. Naturally, she being a female resulted in her doing nothing of what I told her and also having absolutely no idea in which direction she was turning the plane to which forced my friend to stand by her and navigate so it took two people to fly the plane while I was chasing it. How about that? And then they say this was the DJI flying wings. Ha! HEQ you still got work to do it seems. But joking aside, the controls on the Air 2 are a bit sensitive, so it is not the smoothest sequence, but at least I managed to get some good shots of the Swan K1 Pro flying and up close. And so, the flight progressed and at some point I noticed the battery was getting to that 30% mark where it enters return to home, so I landed. Surprisingly enough, I had landed after only 34 minutes of flight. 
Granted, it wasn't the calmest day out there, but given the promise of one hour, I did expect a bit more than 34 minutes, especially considering the plane flew at fixed altitude the whole time. The range test that I did after that lasted about the same as this flight, and it included climbing to 460 meters altitude. I did talk to HEQ, and apparently they have old batch and new batch batteries. The black label packs are the new ones, which is what I used for the range test, and the silver colored ones are the old battery packs. I would assume anyone buying their planes, at least from now on, should get a black label battery. Not black label whiskey, black label battery. Remember that. A different day I charged up the correct battery and went to the in-city field to do an endurance run with it as well. It was a calm evening with barely any wind. I took off and immediately transitioned so as to waste as little energy as possible. Then took it to 100 meters altitude and just cruise around in 1.5 km long straights back and forth for as long as the battery would last. It did in fact do better than the other one but by only roughly 6 minutes which is still 20 minutes short of the advertised flight time. I know it depends on conditions, but I would like to see more suitable conditions for endurance flying than these. At this point, I have my doubts if it will ever last one hour, but even at 40 minutes, this is plenty for this plane. As usual, vibrations were horrific, so I chose to look at the map view. When the video screen is small, at least I can't see the vibrations and the whole thing feels better. So, with the endurance out of the way, it was time to do the range test. But the range test stage started a week or two earlier, even before the plane disassembled in flight. The first range test was actually from within the city. One afternoon, I went to the in-city flying field to do some messing about with the Swan and to also test its flight performance with a set of props for my DJI Phantom 3 Pro. On a side note, HEQ have confirmed that they are using Phantom 3 motors, however I'm not sure if they are copies or the real deal or something else. So, I did put on the Phantom 3 props on the Swan and took off. It looked about the same in hover mode, although it was a bit louder. Did all the tricks pretty much the same, so I then transitioned to fixed wing mode and this is when the weirdness began. It seemed to fly okay, although it felt like the motors were struggling a bit more and from time to time it would start to lean to one side despite me giving it the opposite command. In a few seconds it would start reacting to controls again until the next lean to one side which was weird and only a tiny bit worrying. At some point the lean resulted in a more violent shake so the autopilot sent a warning that it has detected dangerous behavior and transitioned back to hover mode so I landed the swan, put on its original props and despite them being properly unbalanced, it seemed to be quite happy spinning those, since the weird behavior was now gone and it was back to its regular self. I messed about the flying field for a bit, even tried to crash into the construction site nearby, but it appears I was too high for that. As soon as I swapped batteries, I decided to head to the ring road and see how the video signal is going to behave in this location, because in the last year especially, it has become very unpleasant to fly FPV from this location, since there is a ton of interference coming from everywhere. The CE system was especially troubled here. So I reached the ring road, which is 2 kilometers away, and the video feed was good, so I pushed on. Originally, I had no intention to do a range test this day, but getting to 2 kilometers with this good of a signal really picked at my interest, and I just had to go just a bit further. So next checkpoint was the lake, which was just over 3 kilometers away, and it did get there too, and again, the signal was pretty good. You know what followed next, right? Yeah, I had to see how far it was going to go, so I got up to the max flight altitude of 490 meters and kept pushing out. I actually had to go into the settings and extend the fence I had set to 8 kilometers as the plane was nearing that distance. A few times the video froze, but the telemetry was working pretty good. I was really impressed that it had a video that far out flying from within this messy location. Finally, at around 8.7 kilometers, the video feed and telemetry froze and the plane must have entered return to home since the link was regained shortly after and it was headed back home. What I do like about this system is that as soon as there is any signal, it regains the link, be it video or telemetry or both. But 8.7 kilometers was seriously impressive, especially considering officially they promise only about 4 kilometers of range. 
So that finally brings us to the day of the incident. Right before the left side motors and the wing flyaway happened, I was doing a range test at the interference free out of the city flight location and I did expect it would get better range out there and in fact it did. It took a while to figure out the optimal position for the antennas on the radio but eventually I figured it out and pressed on. The plane reached 10.7 kilometers but sadly the battery was starting to run low so I turned around without having lost the video signal. 10.7 kilometers. I never would have imagined that it would go that far. And just in case you are curious, the radio slash video system slash remote is actually a rebranded Skydroid H12 system, which can be purchased on its own. I've included some links in the description below, just in case somebody thinks they can use it in some way, but I can definitely see the possibilities here. They even have a full RTK package, which would be awesome for a mapping plane and would work out of the box with a remote. Sadly, that day I was not able to have another go at the range with the other battery due to the plane coming apart on its way back, which some of you have probably seen in my previous video. But now, replacement parts and all available and taped up, it was time to repeat this test again. And again, the Swan did not have the permission to take my DJI Osmo action camera along for the ride. Also, this time I flew against the wind with the intent of at least making it back quicker and also used the black label battery as I knew it was the one that performs better. And so the flight went on, nothing was falling apart, plane was behaving well and eventually the video froze at the 11.2 km range, although it did start getting choppy a bit before that. Telemetry kept working until about 11.7 kilometers, and I actually had to again extend the fence distance since I had it set to 11 kilometers the previous time. When the telemetry was lost, the remote reported signal loss, so the waiting began. In a few seconds, I got a few packets of data, and the plane showed up at 11.9 kilometers on its way back in return to home mode. And a few more seconds later, telemetry was re established, and shortly after, the video was as well. So it made it 500 meters more than the last time which is not great but given the overall distance I have to say I am super impressed by this radio system. Yes the video quality may not be top notch but it is working and it is regaining the signal very easily on the way back and is convenient with this all-in-one package. Of course 11 kilometers is not the sort of distance you will be flying out to with this plane on a regular basis as it is a bit too much for it, but it is nice to know how far it can go just for peace of mind. Going out to 4 or 5 kilometers as per official specs would be child's play and should represent no issue at all in 99% of locations and situations, which is pretty good. I do like it when companies under promise and with the video range they did under promise by a lot. Not quite the same situation with the endurance though, but we can't have it all. I do have to say though, it was a windy day and upon landing, since the plane kept spinning those props for a good while, it actually started to jump around rather than disarm and unexpectedly ended up on its side breaking two of the props. Not a big loss though, because they're crap anyway. Luckily nothing else got really damaged other than some scuffs on the plastic, but it was super annoying that it doesn't disarm quicker after touching down, or at least it doesn't bring the motor RPM low enough so that the props can't really pick up the plane when there is wind. Good thing I have some spare props, crappy as they are. I am certainly going to have more flights and fun with the Swan though, at least for as long as I have props, making sure to tape all the parts together every time before flight, and will report back how it is faring with extended and regular use. I will also try to find a way to balance those props, may try putting an ND filter in front of that camera, and also will attempt to point said camera up a bit, despite HEQ claiming that it can't be moved up. Should also make an attempt to get over that altitude limit it too, would be nice to at least try and do some cloud chasing with this one, using the black label battery of course. But until then, if you have enjoyed this video, please consider liking, sharing it and subscribing. And if you really liked it and found it useful, you could also consider using the new super thanks option now available on my videos to show your appreciation and support. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will go a long way towards supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. 
Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and due to popular demand I've now also added a buy me a coffee link right under it for those who prefer that method. I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. I wish you all successful flights and I will see you next time.